focus. For those of you who do not know, the Democrats just won an election. I know, I know, I know. It's hard to believe that the Democrats won something. I know. We hear about the Democrats losing all the time. Everybody calls the Democrats losers. The left calls the Democrats losers. The right calls the Democrats losers. Even the Democrats call themselves losers. They love to lose. They are lose lovers, if we're completely honest. Despite all efforts from the Dems, they won. True, Peter No Peterson. They're losers. They're losing. They're not coomers. They're losers. And it sucks. It really motherfucking sucks because the Democrats are, unfortunately, the leftmost viable political party in the United States. And that really sucks. I promise every time I think about that, a small piece of my heart dies. The fact that we don't even have a milk toast labor party here in the United States, that the best that we were able to cough up was the Democrats, sucks. And for those of you who are coming in here who might be new to the leftism stuff, um, oh, did I steal a joke? Oh, I'm sorry. Whatever. Um, I meant to, I think I shouted it out. Whatever. Whoever made the joke, good job. Um, for those of you who might be new to the whole leftism conversation and you might be like, Hey, but I kind of like the Dems. I kind of think they're okay. Well, they're okay in certain ways. Like for example, I mean, the Democrats did ultimately allow gay marriage to happen. Um, the Democrats, um, did allow a, I mean, they, they literally ran a, the first black president in the United States, which is, hey, that's pretty good. That's a genuine thing. The Democrats do have much more equal representation in their party. But if we're completely honest, what the Democrats' real role in this, in this country is not being fascists. That's it. That's their really their only role. I mean, because the Republican Party is... Are they fascists? That's just what the Republican Party is at this point. And I know, I know. If you're, if again, if you're new to the whole leftism thing, you might be like, the fuck? What do you mean? The Republicans? Fascists? Yes, the Republicans are a fascist party. They talk frequently about small government this, small government that. But what they actually do when they're in office is dump a fuckload of money into the police, into the military, into surveillance. They cut social benefits, they fight unions. Their goal is to repress the people under the, in the name of law and order as much as possible. And it's no accident that the entire Republican party with a few incredibly minute exceptions are all old white guys. How many of the Republican voters are good old American workers? Well, probably some. And that's the thing. But the thing is that there's a difference and there's a very distinct difference, which we're going to talk about more. There is a distinct difference between the Republican Party and Republican voters, much like, oh, and the power consolidation and the regulatory capture and the deregulation. Um, yeah, the Republican Party is bad news, like all through and through. And I really want people to realize that because I personally think that the Republican Party is really standing in the way of any social progress in our country. And it's actually killing us. It might be killing the entire planet, arguably. The Republican Party doesn't give a shit about the environment. The Republican Party doesn't give a fucking shit about education, about healthcare, about toxic waste. They don't care. What they care about is a culture war. They care about a Christian-themed culture war. And that's what they always talk about. Just the other day, we did a segment on Candace Owens and uh, Candace Owens and Ben Shapiro talking about the destruction of masculinity. Um, yeah, I agree. I agree, Flair. Oh, yes. Oh, very true. Very true, Otonodoaji. Um, never heard that one before. 
getting an emergency alert on my phone about the extreme virus risk? Well, yeah, the virus risk is really high. It's really high. Um, so, yeah, uh, the Republican Party is standing in the way, like firmly in the way of progress in this country. We, like Mitch McConnell, who is the head of the Republican Party in the Senate, has a graveyard of bills. I talk about this all the time ad nauseum, but keep listening because Mitch McConnell has a graveyard of bills on his desk. And I've said this before to other people. Uh, I've said this before on my stream, but I'm going to say it again. You would have money right now. You would be getting paid a rudimentary form, a primitive form of a UBI if it wasn't for Mitch McConnell. Yeah, no, uh, we're not. We're all good. Yeah, he is a absolute murderer of bills. He kills every bill that comes to his desk. We would have had relief bills if it wasn't for Mitch McConnell. We would have already had one. We would be getting paid. All of us, every single one of you out here, most likely with a very few exceptions, would be getting paid by the government to survive coronavirus. He enjoys being called the Grim Reaper of the Senate. That doesn't surprise me. I'm sure he, I'm sure he gets off to that sort of thing. That, yep, a lot of small businesses didn't survive COVID, but they would have if it wasn't for Mitch McConnell. Chuck Grassley has COVID. I did hear that. Rip. He's also a murderer of American citizens by killing bills. I would agree. That's the case. It's sort of secondhand, but yeah. You mean I wouldn't be grinding gigs that pay like $2 an hour to pay the bills? Probably not. You'd probably be a little bit more comfortable. Probably not amazingly comfortable, but certainly better than that. So Mitch McConnell who is the prime representative of the Republican Party, he's their guy in the Senate, should tell you the direction of the Republican Party. The Republican Party does not care if Americans die. They don't care. I'm not kidding you. Did you not see the Republican representatives going up and saying, well, we're really concerned about our human capital stock. They refer to workers as human capital stock. That is the state of the Republican Party in this country. They don't even have a platform, which is a really good point, wall panel. They don't even have a platform. They just said, we're going to do whatever Trump tells us to do. With that in mind, now that I've done my fair share of shitting on the Republicans, this is why I say that the Democrats, their only job is to not be the Republicans. Because as it turns out, in America, when you're given a choice between fascists and not fascists, you're going to choose not fascists. Or most people will choose not fascists. Most people who aren't rich, white, or highly indoctrinated are going to choose the not fascists. And the thing is, unfortunately, the not fascists have a lot of problems of their own. But guess what? They won. And barring some sort of really intense um, attempted takeover by Donald Trump, which might happen, we've talked about this, but that's not the subject of today's segment. Um, even, a, even in a fascist versus on the way to fascism, the choice is still clear. I agree, Zanzi, 100%. It is better to not have fascism today. There are a lot of indoctrinated people, but we can work on that over time. Um, yes. So barring again, oh yeah. Isn't that bad? Posadas John? Yeah. They actually said that I could find the clip. I just didn't save it for here because I'm kind of just, you know, I'm just talking right now. And that was one that came to mind, but I could show you the clip easily. I could find it easy. Just look it up on YouTube. You could just search it on YouTube, human capital stock. You'll find it immediately. It's ridiculous. It's horrible. It's horrifying. Also, actually, you know what? Before we move on, I am going to show you. I'm going to show you a clip real quick. Let me just get you a, a clip real quick. One moment. One moment. Let me just get this for you because um, because I saved a clip for us to watch today that's pretty important. And I think it will illustrate what I'm talking about here pretty well. Let me just bring it up. I, I, I didn't have it on hand for this section, but I think now that we're talking about this, it fits pretty well. Let me just get this clip real quick. Here we go. So, this clip I'm about to show you, y'all, anybody seen this one? This is Dr. Dr. 
Scott Atlas. Scott Atlas is Trump's COVID guy right now, okay? For those of you who know, that's basically all you need to know about it. He's a Trump crony who got in put of COVID-19. I want you to just listen to what he says in this clip, okay? Let's listen to it. They're suffering from with isolation. Yep. And this kind of isolation is one of the unspoken tragedies of the elderly who are now being told, don't see your family at Thanksgiving. For many people, this is their final Thanksgiving, believe it or not. What are we doing here? I think we have to have a policy, which I have been advocating, which is a whole person whole health policy. It's not about just stopping cases of COVID. We have to talk about the damage of the policy itself. So what does the federal government do? It's what I've advised they're suffering from. With so yeah, this guy is arguing that we shouldn't take COVID precautions on a national level around the holidays because it might be old people's last Thanksgiving anyway. This is why I say that the Republican Party does not give a fuck about you. That's right. If there's anybody who voted Republican listening right now, the Republican Party does not give a fuck about you. I'm talking to you. And I know that sometimes lefties can come off as a little combative and whatever, but I'm trying to reach you. We're trying to get your attention and show you that the party that you are supporting wants you to die. They want you to die because you are inconvenient to them. Unless it's an election year. Other than that, go fucking die is what they're telling you. You are puppets and it sucks. And I'm sorry because I've been in that position myself. I grew up in an incredibly manipulative religion and I know how much it can hurt to realize those sorts of things, that you're being used, but you are. And it's better to realize it now and get out of that Republican position than wait till later. U.S. COVID deaths are officially over 250K. Okay, I'm going to update that in my mind because I'm sure we're going to have a lot of conversations. I know, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. We live in a death cult. Oh, Posadas John, is that the clip? Let me take a look. All right, you know yeah, yeah, here we go. Look, let's just drive it home. Let's drive it home before we move on to the Democrats. Well, let's keep this really simple. There's not okay. only imports and exports in trade. There's imports and exports in policies, markets, conditions, economic fundamentals. This morning, Chairman, the Germans auctioned off boons. Negative yielding for the first time since 2016. Is it no wonder that our rates continue to get pressured lower for many reasons, including but also outside the notion of our economy slowing. What do you think about negative rates and some of what's getting exported not only from Germany, but Japan and China regarding policy and uh, economic weakness? Right. Well, Rick, as you know, because you live right Holy there shit, on, the, on the floor, right, that our bonds are substitute for their bonds. And right now, our tenure is clearly responding to the negative news in Europe. And the news in Europe, the economic news, is really negative. If you look at industrial production, if you look at German GDP numbers, you know, three of the last five quarters are looking very close to, if not in, recession. Uh, Italy's got a lot of stress, and the whole Brexit thing is lurking over all that. And so if you had to say what's different this year from last year, you know, last year at this time, we were looking at a weak first quarter, expecting a strong second quarter, but the rest of the world was kind of doing a lot better. Uh, this year, we're looking at a weak first quarter. We still expect a strong second quarter and rest of the year. Uh, but the momentum from Europe and the momentum from Asia is much different than it was last year. And I think that that's what the bond market's responding to. You know, no matter how powerful an airplane you have traveling through the air, the winds coming at it are going to slow it down. And the more they pick up, the more it's going to exert headwinds. The U.S. economy has slowed a bit on its own. But the big question, Chairman, hey, is Al. how much is being Make sure to click the, uh, to rules, the imp in the rules versus channel. our own condition. And even if it's more overseas, what can we really do about it? I like the underpinnings of the economy, but there's little doubt that we're getting affected by our own coming off our best economic levels and much of Europe and Japan really going down the basement with regard to theirs. Right. Well, first of all, as you know, that since we have a big trade deficit, the, the feedback into the U.S. economy of negative news around the world is much smaller than it would be for, say, you know, a, a different 
uh, economy like, say, Germany. Yes, you did, uh, where, where they really, really care about their exports to us, that if they were to go down because we were in trouble, it would really directly impact their economy. And so I think that basically for the U.S., the question is, as we look forward, uh, that are we more likely to have upside or downside surprises? And I think that the downside surprises really came over the last six months and involved the economies around the world. And there's not a lot more negative news that you know could be worse than what what we've seen in those places, but there's a heck of a lot of upside risk uh, in this year, and I think that that's one reason why equity markets have These guys really are been nerds. able to digest everything. And Fucking the upside nerds. risk is basically last year at this time. I think there was yeah, a they lot always more, say that uh, pessimism about us moving forward with trade deals, but now we've got. USMCA, uh, that, that can pass Congress this year. We've got uh, Secretary Mnuchin yeah, just wait. and Ambassador just wait. It gets worse. fly into China today with these ongoing negotiations. There's a lot of upside stuff uh, that could happen. Meanwhile, deregulation is uh, continuing to gather momentum. Uh, we're expecting a lot more deregulation this year. So I think that... Remember what I said? Remember what I said earlier? I, don't, I didn't even remember this segment of the video, but remember what I said earlier about how the Republicans are the party of deregulation? Do you know what deregulation means? Deregulation is when they take away protections that the government has placed on things like, I don't know, you know, pumping toxic waste into local rivers, uh, things like workplace safety. That's what deregulation means. In the U.S., the risks are balanced to being actually leading on the upside relative to last year and that the negative news around the world is something to factor in. Uh, but since you can think about things that could break the other way for us, that you should continue to be optimistic. No, and the things you mention are the tailwinds, and I am That's definitely right. on your oh, side I agree, there. I, agree. I think the regs, taxes, all that business-friendly administration, to me, is the biggest deal. And we saw that rally in stocks reflecting no that even before They're just Donald spitting Trump in each other's mouths in. and eyes. But mm -hmm. we have to leverage more lifting but with regard to our domestic economy based on what's coming in. So I guess my next question is a simple one. That makes trade that much more important. And I think trade is outsized. I think that trade is the catalyst in so many areas that we're unaware of that should solutions be found, I know, it'll Hyun. really give us a turbo thrust. So my questions are simple. Some of the agreements, like you mentioned, that already done, is there going to be a problem pushing them through Congress? And more importantly, True, Jessica. do you think that the China deal will include the trillions, not only the billions? Buying more grain is fine, but we really need to keep our eye on the big prize, and that's with a T, and that's I T. Fair, Otona, but look, look the, yeah. the going to China first. That our, our negotiators are on the ground. I don't want to get you know too far out in front of them, but I, I can say that it wouldn't still be working if they weren't making a heck of a lot of progress. And it's not you know just about True, one table it's, knife. it's about fixing a relationship that's not really been successful. I think that as far as USMCA uh, goes, that really what's going to happen is that Congress is going to look at the details of the bill, the labor protections in Mexico, even things like really important things like ocean litter agreements about about limiting that. Uh, and they're going to think, you know, this is a really good deal that we've negotiated. It's the first 21st century trade deal uh, that America signed on to, really, with the, yeah. again, like the Internet agreements, the data protections and so on. So you so, mean the same fair, group in Congress that won't take Mueller at face <laughs> value is just going to vote? Well, we'll get into that in another time. Last week, the Treasury Department released February monthly deficit. Two hundred and thirty four. I just want to give you the context. I want you to know that I'm not cutting this history. out of context. Now, That's I why we're watching this. that you have to have deficits to seed programs that actually deliver in the future. But I want you to weigh in on deficits. Right. Well, I think that you know, we're, you're right that uh, the president's uh, first round was really to focus on the biggest problem, which was that we were the highest corporate tax place on earth and our regulations were advancing at a ridiculously high rate. And I guess the final thing is that, that our defense had been allowed to wither on the vine a little bit. And so he increased defense spending. He led a deregulation I'll explain effort just that a we second, just documented Dan. in the economic report. The president actually cut paperwork costs for the first time that we could uh, find a recording. Don't history. worry, it'll be over and soon, Breyer. tax cuts. But now, as, as we look forward, that you're right, that the deficit is a serious problem. And that's why the president's proposed across-the-board spending cuts of 5%. And I think that as we look forward to the debate this year over the budget, that we're going to really, you know, stick to our guns and pursue a, a big reduction in government spending this year. You know, I guess another issue that I would like to bring up is when this administration wants lower rates, and I understand, I get it. Uh, we now see that overseas keeping rates low and negative really hasn't made a huge difference. Is it really problematic 
for this administration, for its central bank to try to have some insurance for the next slowdown, a real slowdown, because we know somewhere out there there is one. Well, I know the president has had some uh, opinions about uh, what's going on at the Fed, but that's not my role at the CEA, really. And the, the one thing I can say is that we've appointed great folks over there to the Fed and uh, yeah, he's, you know, I think yeah. continuing he's talking to, to a Wall Street guy. And I think that, you know, anyone who wonders whether we respect the independence of the Fed should look at the Oh, this was from before the election. This was from the beginning of this year. You've been on record saying that you think we have a shot at 3% for the next several Just plus listen. years. I think you That's may right. have said five. And I'm not necessarily disagreeing with you, but you're certainly in the minority. Can you right. give me something in real time that gives you Just confidence listen. that your prediction will this be This was, um, yeah, sure. That I it, think this was, let me see here. This was in March. This was in March 20, uh, March 27th. Wait, this isn't even the right one. This isn't the right clip. Wait, this isn't even the right clip. This is the wrong clip. God damn it. Where's the one? Where's the fucking one? Here we go. God damn it. That pisses me off. Here we go. Happens. I've been arguing for some time now. Capital stocks just drop. There we World go. War II, the he thinks that it, it looks a little bit like at the end of World War II, the countries that didn't have their capital stocks destroyed by the war, that when the war ended, they pretty much got their economies going at a rate of 40 or 50 percent a year. And while, you know, he, he was so, cautioned about the analogy and it was just in a private email, I think that, that you know, uh, Professor Barrow's view uh, that we don't have our capital stock hasn't been destroyed. Our human capital stock uh, is uh, ready to get back to work. Ouch. All right, look. See, this is why I didn't have it ready. So forgive me for grabbing the wrong clip. Nonetheless, you can see that this guy is always smiling and positive because what they're doing is they're selling the country on the concept that the stock market works as intended. That's the thing. And he describes people as human capital stock because... That's what workers are to people like this. Human capital stock. Literally. Describe them like animals. You know what livestock is? Switch one word. Human capital stock. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It's pretty fucked. So the reason why, again, I know that was a little bit of a, of a, of a, it was a little bit of a, you know, a ramble. But the whole reason why I showed this section the whole reason why I wanted to show this is because I want people to understand that while we are critiquing the Democratic Party and we are about to critique them very, very hard, there is a reason why we've been stuck with the Democratic Party. And that's because these guys are the other option. These guys are the other option in the United States right now. No, oh, hold on. I just got a DM. Let me just make sure. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> now, we got to talk about the Dems. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, now that we understand why I fucking can't stand the Republicans, why I think the Republicans are th one of the greatest moral blights that has ever existed in the history of this motherfucking country. Oh, yeah, really? That's awesome. Who should run when Bernie dies? We'll find out. We'll find out in the future. This is what's up with the Democrats right now. Let me just show you. Many of you have probably seen this already, but I'm going to show it again because guess what? We can be angry motherfucking together. You ready? Let's take a look at this. Ready? I'm going to play you a little video. Okay. Here we go. Ready? So right here... Over here, I'm going to move chat for a second. Here is Kamala Harris. Right here is Kamala Harris. Coming from this side of the screen is Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham. And we'll talk about Lindsey Graham in a second. But let's just show what happens here. Most of you already know who Lindsey Graham is. Boom. Fist bump. 
Bada boom, let's watch it again. Want to watch it a third time? Want to see the Democratic vice president who just went against, who just won against Donald Trump, fist bumping the stooge of Donald Trump, who is currently attempting to get the Democratic election in Georgia thrown out. Yeah, damn. That's a little, that's really fucking bad, isn't it? That's really fucking bad. Now, you might get the, uh, you know, you might get this, this whole uh, defense of like, oh, well, you know, it's just, they're being nice. They're being nice because they have to work together. Motherfucker, this guy is promoting a conspiracy that you didn't win the election. This guy is contributing to people who believe that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have committed treason and are not going to take over. They are contributing to the mentality of a civil war. It's a big club and you ain't in it. There are times where you just can't be nice. And guess what? Do you want to know what's even worse about this situation? Do you want to know what makes me even motherfucking matter? Is that Kamala Harris should know fucking better. Even if Kamala Harris wanted to be buddy buddy with Lindsey Graham behind closed doors, Kamala Harris should know, first of all, that obviously everything in the halls of Congress is recorded, obviously. Literally, we have a channel called C-SPAN who does that. Kamala Harris should never have done this in public because whatever happens behind closed doors, maybe they're, maybe they're on peaceful terms one-on-one. -on -one. Fist bumping the guy who is currently delegitimizing the election at this point in time is one of the most fucking stupid political moves I can possibly imagine. And I just want you to recognize that this particular tweet, this is just one. This is just one of many. Look at how much engagement this shit is getting. Look at how much engagement this shit is getting. Everyone is seeing this. Everyone is seeing this motherfucking shit. And do you know what that does? That undermines legitimacy even worse even fucking worse this under undermines the legitimacy of our government even more because what it seems like what it looks like and keep in mind that in politics this is not true necessarily in the court of law but in politics it is important to not only avoid corruption but to avoid the appearance of corruption you want to know why because as it turns out public faith is incredibly, incredibly important to the functioning of government. This is a flub of unbelievable proportions, and it's hardly the first one. Because we have, um, what's it, uh, Feinstein, uh, uh, Senator Feinstein, um, Diane Feinstein praising... Uh, Lindsey Graham and how he ran the bullshit confirmation hearing hearing of ACB, a person who, just so you know, might make it possible for them to overturn gay marriage in the United States, who will make it possible for them to overturn Roe v. Wade, removing the right of women to get an abortion in the United States. And arch Democrat Dianne Feinstein congratulated and praised Lindsey Graham on the bullshit confirmation hearing that was blatantly hypocritical, blatantly partisan, blatantly politically motivated, and she praised him. So this is hardly the first time. The fucking, the, the fucking Democrats have been doing this over and over and over. They don't even understand what they're doing. And what's worse is not only do they not care on, to... You know, not, not only are they disgusted by the moral behavior, by the immoral behavior of the Republican Party enough to not want to fist bump them. That would be, that is bad enough. It's bad enough that the Democrats feel comfortable, you know, hobnobbing and being friends with people who are literal fascists. But they also give so little of a shit 
about the American people that they're willing to just praise them openly in public, knowing that that undermines the hope and the legitimacy of the government. I love that, like, American politicians are so out of touch, they would call it fisting. You know some of them have. You know it. True! They probably have. Don't forget the head dinosaur Nancy Pelosi trying to stagnate the actions of progressives like AOC and Il Ilan Omar. Yeah. Absolutely. 100%. The Democratic establishment has done everything in its power to stifle progressive like progressive politics in this country. They have done everything in their power to slam down on any social justice movement within the Democratic Party over and over and over again. So this is why lefties like myself call the Democratic Party a center-right party and why we advocate for voting for Joe Biden only because only because we have no other option than either by having to struggle against Biden or having to struggle against Trump, and Biden is a better option. Yeah, rip RBG. What this is called is called neoliberalism. And the Democrats are indeed neoliberal. Oh yeah, well, no, not everything is. Um, slime Cat, everything is neoliberal or fascist that's that's the secret and there's a fun there's a saying that people say and i don't fully agree with this or the logic of it but it's the saying goes cut a liberal and a fascist bleeds and this right here is what people are talking about this shit right here is what people are talking about when they say that because kamala harris is supposed to be left-leaning Kamala Harris is supposed to be fighting against Trump. And yet, here is Kamala Harris on video fist bumping Lindsey Graham, the arch conservative, the guy who has helped, helped greatly, mind you, not just a little bit, has helped greatly in contributing to the 250K dead Americans. 250,000 dead Americans. Graham is one of Trump's biggest simps. Yup. And here we go. There's a nice little fist bump. Ha <laughs> ha. Can you imagine how you would feel if I was fist bumping Richard Spencer? If you had a video of me fist bumping Richard Spencer, this is like that, but worse. This is worse because Lindsey Graham has done more individual harm than Richard Spencer. And Kamala Harris is in a position of power considerably greater than me. Considerably. How much faith do you all have in the Democratic Party when they're willing to be nice in public, in the eyes of the public, knowing they're being watched, with the people who have led to the death of 250,000 Amer Americans waste, wastefully? How bad is Lindsey Graham? Lindsey Graham is real bad, Flair. Real bad. And I don't want to go into, a, I don't want to derail this whole segment into talking about Lindsey Graham, but Lindsey Graham, he ain't good. In fact, right now, he's the one, he's fueling Trump's coup attempt, like hardcore. Lindsey Graham is one of his biggest supporters. He's horrible. And unfortunately, it gets worse because the neoliberal problem, the problem of the of the of the neoliberalism in the Democratic Party gets even worse. Let me just read you a little thing here. Ready? I'm going to show you a quick little tweet here. OK. Governor Cuomo on following COVID-19 rules. This is from the official Twitter of a uh, of the of a Rochester, New York news station, local station. Cuomo on following COVID-19 rules. If you're socially distant and you wore a mask and you were smart, none of this would be a problem. It's all self-imposed. If you didn't eat the cheesecake, you wouldn't have a weight problem. One of the most foremost Democrat governors in the country, the governor of New York, 
Andrew Cuomo, if you're socially distant, you wore a mask and you were smart, none of this would be a problem. It's all self-imposed. If you didn't eat the cheesecake, you wouldn't have a weight problem. Fuck the Democrats. Fuck the Democrats. Fuck the Democrats and fuck them and again and again and again. Fuck the Democrats. Can you imagine being so inhumane that in the midst of a crisis fueled by the right wing, fueled by right wing disinformation, that you would use your position of power as the governor of the second largest state in the United States where many thousands of people have died to tell people it's your fault for not wearing your mask. It's your fault for eating that cheesecake. You know, that fucking boils my goddamn blood. And this is why people say, we ain't going back to brunch. We aren't going back to sleep. Because fuck the Dems. These people don't give a shit about us either. And there's a better future. Because what we're going to do, all of us out here who are lefties, all of us who want a better world, are going to do better than the Dems. This is why you can't just stop at voting for Joe Biden and call it good. Because this is what you get under Joe Biden. What you get under Joe Biden is rugged individualism, bootstrapping, and just a slightly nicer veneer. Just a, just a little bit. Brunch is canceled permanently. Until this country has equity, until this country has civil rights, until social justice is achieved in this country, none of us are going back to brunch. And if you decide you want to go back to brunch, then I hope you won't mind, but I'll be uh, shaking the chair underneath you and flipping your table. And I hope all of you will join me in that. Because we can't do this anymore. This neoliberal bullshit is not going to work anymore. It really is not. People are dying under the neoliberal order. Joe Biden has won. But guess what? Joe Biden won't be in office until January. And do you know what will be happening in January? Just so you all know. Do you know what's going to be happening in January? And I apologize. This is going to get a little dark for a minute. Let's, let me just, let me just show you what we're looking at is going to be the case in the middle of January. Let me just bring this up real quick for you. Let me just show you. You seen this recently? Seen this chart recently? So here's where we were when we went into lockdown the first time, over here. This is where we were when we went into the first lock lockdown. This is where we should have gone into a second lockdown, and we didn't. And this is where we are now. Do you remember how bad it was at the beginning of the year? This is not even the beginning, because we're not even going into lockdown yet. I mean, a few states are, but most are not. Look at how much more. We're talking like triple. Remember when they were talking? Um, remember when people were talking about uh, the hospitals being overwhelmed so much so that people were dying and just being thrown into trucks? That happened here in America this year? Do you remember that? That's happening now three times as much. Right now. And we're going into winter. And we don't have any relief checks. People are going to get evicted. There's going to be a lot of homeless people. And the Democrats have no answer. The Democrats have no answer. Because the Democrats don't care. They care about civility. They care about fist bumping with Lindsey Graham. They care about standing by and eating their brunch and returning to normalcy because they're fine. They're not workers. They have cushy jobs.
But guess who can do something about it? Do you want to know who can do something about it? This is going to be our crisis of the third century. This is going to be the fall of the American empire. Listen, this might come as news to all of you. Uh, the American empire is falling. We, the, the, it's not coming. It's here. It's here. It's, it's here. But guess what? I know that's a little doomer, and I'm sorry if that scares you. It is scary. I'm scared. This is something that scares me. I've been thinking about this all year. For, all, for those of you who are new to my channel, all of you newcomers, all of you 191 amazing viewers who are here right now, Pog, amazing. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe, please. Um, it helps me. But all of you who are here, you might not know this. It's not Doomer time. Just wait. Those of you who are here now, my first panel that I ever went on, the first panel I ever went on in my entire streaming career, way back when, at the beginning of the year, some of you might have been here. Some of you might have been here. On that panel, I warned people of this sort of outcome. I said, hey, we really need to take this seriously. This was back when Bernie was still in the race. And I said, Joe Biden? Joe Biden is not going to carry us through this COVID thing. We don't even know if there's going to be an election properly this year. Well, as it turns out, it was a real mess. And we, but I know, Snowdrift, it's sad. This was back when I was still fighting for Bernie because Bernie was still on the ballot. No, Jessica Gaylord, not even that will do it. You can't stop the fall of the American empire. It's too big for any one of us to, to stop, and we don't want to stop it. We don't, we don't want the fall. We don't want to stop the fall of an empire. But I can offer you an alternative, an alternative that the Democrats have failed to offer and are failing to offer. And that alternative is socialism. I'm serious. I'm dead serious. That alternative is community. That alternative is something better than what is being offered right now. And that only happens if we fucking build it. You see, we take care of us. Do you understand that? We do. We do. The Democrats don't fucking care. They are going to go back to brunch. They're going to be sitting in their McMansions while people are dying in the streets. They're doing that right now. But we can take care of us. We can win advantages for ourselves and for our communities and share them with the people around us. We can connect and build bonds. We can watch out for one another. We can educate ourselves and we can fight. And we can decide to not settle for the Dems, but instead strategically, intelligently, and effectively build a better future. Because if we don't, no one else will. And I know it can be scary because, let's be real, a lot of us don't probably have a whole lot of influence, but we probably have something. We all have something that we can do. And if we put those talents together, you know, there's this, there's this crazy thing. There's this crazy thing called cooperation. And cooperation builds into socialization, which builds into civilization. Humans do good together. Humans do really good when we work together. Have you seen what humans have done in the past? We have built the most fucking wildest shit. Humans put people on the moon. Humans put a fucking robot on an asteroid that's moving through space at like a thousand miles an hour. And they landed a fucking robot that's like this big in comparison on it. That's fucking, what the fuck? We've built flying machines. We've built laser guns. We've built video games and cathedrals. But we have to do that shit together. We can't go on with this absolutely idiotic, hyper-individualistic worldview. This, this Thatcherite. You know, do, do people know Margaret Thatcher was? Maybe a lot of you don't. Margaret Thatcher 
was like the UK's Reagan. Ronald Reagan, Republican guy, obsessed with rugged individualism and bootstrapping. And Margaret Thatcher, they called the Iron Lady. Ollie has a good vid on this. Yes. Nah, Thatcher didn't have girl power. Fuck Margaret Thatcher. And fuck Ronald Reagan too. And fuck the Democrats. And fuck the Republicans. True silent. As an Irishman, I piss on her grave. As an American, I remotely piss on her grave. Sorry, we can't say that here, SQ. Got to get that one out of chat, mods. Sorry. But I, I mean, well, no. Okay, that's complicated. But we can't say that. Sorry. No offense. Just don't worry about it. Just watch that shit. I do agree that Margaret Thatcher is dead. She is dead. A piss over the pond. True. Honk. So when I say fuck the Dems, it's not because it's not out of some stupid and like 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 unthought through anti-establishment view, which I think is stupid, by the way. If you just hate the establishment just because it's an establishment, if you go like the Jimmy Dore route of just like the oh the the Dems are just as bad as the Republicans because they're both the establishment. You're not thinking tactically. I dislike the Democrats because they don't approach politics seriously. Because they are a false opposition party with some good people in it, mind you. Because Bernie ran for the Dems, AOC ran for the Dems, and there's some hope in ref in in radically changing the Democratic Party. But we have to take it motherfucking seriously. And it's going to have to be a multi-front battle. Because we're not going to win by voting, by just voting at all. And we're not going to survive this winter at, like, I'm serious. A lot of people are going to be hurt permanently or die this winter. That's a fact. That is a, there is nothing that will change that right now. However, we can make it better if we look out for each other, if we care for one another, if you give a bed to a friend who needs it, if you reach out to a family member who needs your help. The, the establishment of the Dems, the establishment of the Republicans has become the fixation point. But the fixation should not be on just the establishment. The fixation needs to be on the actions that build a rotten establishment. A rotten establishment that is currently choking our country. People like me are working within progressive democratic causes to literally weed out the neolibs and or bully them into leftist policy. I don't want anyone to give up hope. No one's giving up fucking hope in this chat. None of you better be dooming in chat right now because this is not the, mo the moment for doom. This isn't the moment for doom. This is the, the moment to become resolute, to recognize that we have an opportunity, that there are many people who see this. See, there's this thing. There's this thing that's been popular um, on the internet for a long time, and that's being like, oh, everybody's dumb. People are so stupid. And sometimes we make little throwaway comments, and that's fine. But if you start actually believing that everybody is stupid... You will become a doomer. And it's not true, actually. People are, when they're given the right tools, pretty good at figuring shit out. In fact, I'm surprised every single day by how many wonderful people and intelligent people I meet. My server, my community is full of wonderful, talented people. I know each and every one of you has talents. Each and every one of you has skills. And those skills can be put to good use. Look at that fucking wide people right there. Holy shit. Look at that. That's wide. But seriously. Mind if I point the link to that? Yeah, go for it. Go ahead and post it. That's fine. I know you're working on something, so get it in there. Some of us are like me. What my, what my talent is, is I can rhetoric. I can speak. I can... 
I know some stuff about cameras. I know how to connect with people. I know how to talk. That's my skill. I have a couple other skills as well. And I'm doing what I can to reach out, to teach people, to entertain people, to keep them their spirits as high as possible in these hard times. Other people have different skills. And we need those skills. No matter what fucking this neoliberal order makes you feel, you have a place. You have skills that can fix this fucking world. And if you don't yet, you have the capacity to learn them. So that's why we're not going to doom her. Because in times like these, in times of great hardship, we are not benefited by letting ourselves spiral into darkness. We are benefited by identifying who has created the darkness, why they created it, and how we fix it. This is the time for us to bloom. This is the time for us to get better at this shit. And also, this is the time for us to bully the shit out of the Dems, out of the Republicans, and not just to bully them, but to do so in a way that actually makes meaningful change. You understand? I'm done. I am so motherfucking done with this stupid performative bullshit of being like, oh, the Dems are... It's like the crystal ball shit. The Jimmy Dore shit. I'm done with that shit. Meaningless whining that doesn't identify how we can actually make change. You know who's a good ally? AOC. You know who else is a good ally? Fucking anarchists. You know who else is a good ally? People who share our values and are actually trying to change the world. You know who's not our ally? Joe Biden. You know who's not our ally? Kamala Harris. You know who else isn't our ally? Nancy fucking Pelosi. These people are not the only option. And there's many possible paths before us. There's a lot of things that could go wrong. I don't know. We don't even know what Trump's going to do yet. But do not get complacent. This is not the time for complacency. Oh yeah, Ilan Omar, Cory Bush. This is not the time for complacency for saying, yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess we can just let Pelosi keep doing her thing, even though she's contributed to deregulation, which has led to the collapse of the American, of, of the American working class. True, Nina Turner's amazing. Also, we have to fight against neoliberalism. And it sucks because we're fighting a two-front war. We're fighting against the rampant fascism of the Republicans. And we're fighting against the corrupt, rotting, but polished on the outside uh establishment of the of the of the neolibs but we can do it we can do it and if we can't well at least we tried because guess what here's the deal we have the benefit of being correct kind of cool huh we have the benefit of being right it is it is the lefties who have recognized that the world is in danger it is from climate change, not from some imaginary bullshit that's invented to justify why you still push Christianity to everybody. It is the lefties who have identified that the working, the masses, the objective majority of people in the world, but also in America, live in abject poverty. I mean, true, Pinkwug. They are both to the right. They don't have us flanked. But it can be a little confusing. And sometimes we have to do things like vote for Biden because he's better than Donald Trump and we would get immediately killed under Donald Trump. Do you think the more we call for action, the more threatening and uninvited we sound to people who otherwise would be open-minded to the ideas and messages that we are trying to get across? No. I just think we need to do it effectively. I think we need to do it effectively. 
I don't, I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of seeing people that I love suffer. I'm tired of seeing people that I love being ripped off by bosses, being ripped off by their shitty jobs that mistreat them and then leave them for dead. I am tired of people that I love paying their taxes, working their fucking asses off, and then getting fucked by a government that says that it's there to protect them. I am tired of witnessing the supreme depression that other trans people around me suffer, including myself. But I am so motherfucking done with this shit. I'm so tired of it. So I don't, and I think other people are as well. I think a lot of people are tired of this. How many people do you know who are like super gung-ho about life in America right now? I mean, that's true, Volterra Op. I agree. We are strong together. We are not strong when we kowtow to every demand of the Democrats. We are not strong when we allow Republicans easy wins. We have to fight, and we have to fight hard. And that means taking it seriously. So, yeah. The official slogan of the DNC. Let's find out what we got here. What's this meme? Just do nothing. There you go. Yeah, let's let's do this. This is a good one. Just do nothing. It is... No wait, just do nothing. It is impossible. <laughs> this is one of those don't dead open inside. True. Almost every conversation I have about how America is very powerful, but that it's very flawed, and almost every time I get shut down. Well, it's a hard conversation to have. People believe very strongly in this concept of patriotism. They're very personally invested in it. See, one of the things that's really hard about dealing with neoliberalism is that neoliberalism is an ideology. It's not all that far off from being a religion of a sort. Really, really isn't. It, it really, really isn't. People have bought into this belief that everyone is just an individual, that everything you do is, is intrinsically your fault, that every man is an island and nobody affects one another. But that's not true. We grow up in families. We rely on one another for all kinds of stuff. Like, for example, like, I mean, I think like this, I, I can't even, I can't even fathom it. Think about what I'm doing right now. I am streaming over a phone that was designed by thousands of people who I don't know, uh, which is firing through a wire which was invented by a team of people I don't know, into a computer full of parts that were invented by a thousand different people that I don't know, on screens made invented by people that I don't know, and their work, and they don't know me. We do this shit for one another. And it's only our ideology that tells us that there's something wrong with that. We make stuff for one another. We take care of people that we don't even know. Because that's what humans do when we're at our best. When we're at our best, we work together. Even if it doesn't directly benefit us. Because all of us being together, all of us surviving together and making a good place for us to live in benefits all of us. Humans... In my mind, we should work for a world where humans, all humans, are the beneficiaries of the collective human knowledge. We figure something out cool, we should share it with one another. And animals too. Yes, animals should benefit from it as well. But, like, that's a little bit more granular than I want to talk about at the moment. But yes. Neoliberalism is a mind prison. It limits you. It tells you there's only one way to live. And that way is getting a job, grinding your life out until you die, and then never having, never witnessing any change because this is the end of the world. And the thing is, it's funny because, um, oh yeah, I'll check the art channel. Let me check the art channel real quick. Here we go. But let me finish this rant and then I'll check the art, art, art channel. Neoliberalism would have you believe that there is that there is no future other than this one. But let's analyze that claim real quick before we end this section. Do you think that Donald Trump lives the life that we live? Do you think that Nancy Pelosi lives the life that you live? 
There might be a small amount of you in my audience. I don't know. Maybe there's some of you that are very, very well off. But even you probably don't live a life like that of Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos lives a life you can't even imagine. Multiple houses, luxury you can't compare. They live in a different world than you because you have been exploited in order to make it possible for them. So this end of ca this like, you know, end of history concept is only true for the working class. It's only true for anybody who's not in the 1%. For those of the 1%, they're building rockets. They can they they can have a pool in their backyard and swim at their leisure. They can get any surgery they want, make themselves look however they wish. They can buy whatever clothes they could imagine, the most comfortable bed in the world. And I think we should share such things. I think that all humans do a fucking lot to make society happen, and we should share in it. They may as well be from another planet. Yeah, they're that out of touch. But also, we can't even fathom. Can you imagine? Uh, what was it? Was it uh, Betsy DeVos? Betsy DeVos had like a yacht inside of another yacht? Oh God, Jessica. And this is not to say, mind you, this is not to say that like you're bad if you have money. You're not bad just for having money. But just keep in mind that the way that our current system is set up, that the amount of wealth that is given to people like Jeff Bezos is more than they could ever spend in a hundred lifetimes. It's so much that it's being deprived from other people because that's how they perpetuate it. But guess what? We could have a life where everybody has really nice, comfortable things, where we work together and enjoy things. We literally have enough resources on the planet to live like that, but not under this system. And that means we need to change this system. And the way we start changing it is by working together, by defying what this system tells us we have to do. Yo, it's crazy. The upper echelons live in another world than us, and we live worlds completely alien to third world countries. How must that compare? Yeah, it's wild, right? It's really wild. I once read that Jeff Bezos could stop working and spend one million a day, and he would be he would go broke in like four hundred years. Yeah, red cat. <laughs> Donald Donald Trump is in the site chat telling us that uh, he won he won California, Redifornia, Caloredia. We work together. That's what we do. We we work together, but not just work together. We work together intelligently. Everybody's got different talents, so we take care of each other. We fucking push forward. We build and we build, and we never forget. We never forget that if we don't challenge the structures, we're never going to change anything at all. Because these structures perpetuate. These structures abuse people. So yeah. There's the rant. There's my rant about the Democrats. Are the Democrats our enemy? They kind of are, yeah. Not all of them. Not every last Democrat. But... For what the Democratic Party currently represents? Yeah, they are. So yeah, there's that. Let's check the art channel. Let's check the art channel. Yeah, of course we can, Jessica. Of course we can. Let me just check this real quick. Let me check the art channel. One second. I have to move the Discord for a second. Because, um, check the art channel. Oh, hey, let's take a look. <laughs> hey, that's amazing. Hold on. Let's take a look. Yo, this is great. I got to save this for, I got to save this. Holy shit. I'm going to pin this for later. I'm going to pin this. So good. Pin. Oh, this one is so good. Look at this. Look at look at Gina's handiwork. Holy shit, Gina. This is so good. Holy shit. No more stupid brunch. Gina, this is based. This is so based. What the fuck? 
Holy shit, Pog! This is so Pog! What the fuck? Gina, holy shit. I gotta pin this one too for later so I, I don't forget it. Holy shit. I am the Senate. Oh my god. Whoops. Let's get the live stream chat back up. Best thumbnails on YouTube. Swear to God. I swear to God. Gina, you are so fucking talented. 